Good evening and welcome to BBC Spotlight Channel Islands. Tonight, underground inferno drilling through 10 years of rubbish to reach a fire that's 35 metres below the surface. Man overboard, how a little gadget has become the new fisherman's friend. And they're getting married in Jersey Opera House. We meet the first couple to stage their wedding there. If you want to buy a new home in Jersey, it'll cost you a fifth more than last year. That's an average increase of over £70,000. It may be a sign the economy is doing well, but is a dream of a home with a garden likely to remain just that for many people? Dan Aldridge Neal has more. Thousands of music fans can look forward to a new festival in Guernsey. A disagreement is being made where, to put yeah. out a fire deep below the surface of Guernsey's landfill rubbish tip. Previous attempts to extinguish it at Moncoué have failed. Well, you are watching the BBC in the Channel Islands later in Spotlight with Justin and Victoria. You're watching the BBC in the Channel Islands later in the programme with Justin and Victoria. We find out about the extra classes the pupils are queuing up for. Love it or hate it, today is St. Valentine's Day. For the more romantic among us, a day to show how much a loved one means. Those more cynical would say it's over-commercialised rubbish. But whatever your personal view, it's certainly made an impact on island life, as Roisin Gorson reports. Well, if you need an excuse to cuddle up tonight, then I think the weather can provide it because it's gone chilly. Here's Alex Barr. The next Island Games looks set to be the biggest ever. Initial figures suggest more than 3,700 people have already registered, and that's without adding on supporters and media representatives. Rushing news nights over on BBC Two. From me, though, good night. Have a good one. Bye bye. Hello, I'm Gwyn Garfield Bennett with the latest from the Channel Islands. Another report into Guernsey's education system. This time, primary schools are under fire as a third of children. From the studios of ITN, the news with Gwyn Jones. Good morning, the headlines. The Queen is told a Labour government will not pay for a new royal yacht. Five road protesters locked in a tunnel defy the bailiffs. And the hostess whose quick thinking saved lives. It's now over 24 hours since the Paris-bound TWA flight 800 exploded in mid-air and crashed into the sea off Long Island killing all 230 people on board. Well, it's now 16 minutes to six. You're watching the morning news from ITN coming up. How a drug prescribed by doctors to save lives can be a killer. Join us again after the break. Welcome back to ITN's morning news. Today's top story. Relatives of a Dunblane victim say a ban on keeping handguns at home won't be enough to stop another tragedy. It's thought ministers will make the recommendation after Lord Cullen's long-awaited report on the shooting reaches the government today. Quick thinking by a hostess saved the lives of coach passengers after the driver collapsed at the wheel. She stopped the bus by steering it against a safety barrier on the M42 near Solihull. But Tina McCall, who today celebrates her 40th birthday, says she's no heroine. Gareth Furby reports. Well, that's all from the ITN Morning News team. There'll be bulletins throughout the day on ITV. The next main news at 12.30. Me, Mark Mas. Goodbye. Enjoy your Friday. Good morning. These are the main stories on Tuesday, the 24th of December. A child tragedy leads to a nationwide warning about Christmas tree lights. The pictures that Claudia doesn't want published. And Newcastle still can't win.
Good morning from Gwyn and me. The time now is 8 o'clock and you're morning. watching Breakfast. The Prime Minister faces one of the biggest challenges of his career when he makes a closing speech at the party conference in Brighton. It has been the Tories' most nervous and divided party conference for years, but Mr Major's supporters say he'll leave no doubt who's leader. Richard Bailey reports. Well, Bill Giles is in the Weather Centre. Good morning, Bill. I think the rugby spectators will be needing their woolly hats and gloves, won't they? Yeah, I think they'll be needing their max and umbrellas as well, you know, Gwyn. Because First, here's Gwyn with a summary of this morning's main news. Thanks, Laurie. Good morning. The Chancellor, Norman Mont, will outline the government's new economic strategy today when he addresses... And that's it from us. The end of the line is approaching. We'll be back at half past six tomorrow. From Gwyn and me, a very good morning to you. Good morning and a very warm welcome to Business Breakfast with the business news from at home and all around the world. In the next hour we'll have all national and international news. The detailed well, overnight well, markets well. would have pleased Mr Summers. The dollar hardly budged after that G7 communique. Well here in the next half hour as the observer is well, finally well, discussed what business stories are making the papers is with me, Chief Economist of Mitsubishi Bank. Good morning. Well I've got a fairly good news review this morning because we're looking with me in the studio to discuss the latest developments in the markets is Philip Wollstonecroft, UK strategist at Smith Newport. Good morning. Good morning. Time, I'll be back with a market update in around 15 minutes. In a moment, breakfast news, but first all the news, travel and weather where you live.